the 1966 Chaparral 2D by Monogram. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? Hello once again, race fans. Welcome back to the pit. Today we are looking at another one of the great race cars. I figured last week we were looking at the Alpine A210 by Union, so we might as well continue racing at the pits with our Monogram 1966 Chaparral 2D Coupe Daytona 1966 Jim Halls with pre-painted driver figure, drivers Phil Hill and Joe Bonnier. So, that was quite a big, big title on this box for a very, very cool kit. So, before we get down to the pits to shoot our air guns into the bolts of the wheels to get them ready to race, let's not forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all our friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are one of the first ones to see it. And now, without further hesitation, let's go down to the racetrack. Hello once again, race fans, and welcome back to the 1966 Daytona. Today, we're going to be looking at Jim Hall's Chaparral 2D Coupe with pre-painted driver figure. The drivers for this car were Phil Hill and Joe Bonnier. Now this is a really cool kit. It was originally introduced in 1966 during the height of slot car racing. So it does have some details in it. It also has some very interesting blank areas where you can put in your own brass frame and of course a slot car engine if you were able to kit bash. <laughs> All right, let's just take a look at the sides of this box here. First off, you can just zoom in on this panel. So what we have here is a model kit that is 7 inches in length with 35 pieces molded in white and the decals are water slide. And in here we get a whole bunch of cool details. So first off, the history. The Chaparral 2D Coupe, first raced at Daytona in 1966, was a development of the famous Chaparral 2. It was designed to compete in international racing for prototype sports cars. This Daytona version of the 2D Coupe featured a movable flipper spoiler similar to that used on the famous Chaparral 2. The chassis was the same as the 2 version, which was known as the wingiest sports car on the American big bore scene in its day. The car was piloted by accomplished drivers Phil Hill and Joe Bonnier, but due to a mechanical failure, they were not able to finish the 1966 Daytona race. And as you can see here, it says pre-painted driver figure included, velocity stacks, air scoop, movable rear spoiler, and authentic markings and sponsor decals. Molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And over here, we got a little paint call out it says you need to get aluminum, flat black, gloss brown, gloss white, semi-gloss black, and transparent red. Very interesting. <laughs> I'm looking at this side of the box, taking it back a bit. We have a built-up model version of the Chaparral. And now this is where we get some cool, cool stuff. <laughs> I just got to put it a little off camera. So we get this nice view of the car itself when it's all built up in the rear view with that cool decal that shows through the grill, as well as our painted driver figure and our car here with the four velocity stacks. Now, as you can see, it's very slot car style as this is on a plate that pushes up from underneath into the body panel. And that would be a, a very slot car way to do it because your electric motor to run the slot car would be underneath there. So you wouldn't want a uh, V8 hanging down. All right, I'll just turn this over again and again. So we get back to our lid. And now let's just take the lid off and see what we get presented with with the parts here. Well, because I tipped it around, everything stood on end. <laughs> anyway, you get this nice instruction sheet and look what it says here. One at the 2007 World of Wheels Show and Shine in Calgary for my Blue Max Hot Rod Kit. So really cool. And of course here we get more of the write-up. And then we got our plastic parts. As you can see, 
there's not very many. I did start to work on this a little bit, but not enough to really ruin the unboxing video. Here's got our chrome decal sheet, as well as glass and white parts, as well as our wheels. So let me just move this out of the way and bring our instructions in and we'll take a look at these. Okay, so here we have our chaparral instructions and I've just turned the camera around so that they would fit in better in our frame here. So, we've got this great write-up by Monogram and it really says, the Chaparral 2D Coupe is a much modified version of the Chaparral 2 Roadster and was designed to compete for the International Trophy for Prototype Sports Cars. This version was first introduced at the 24-hour Daytona Continental. The chassis for the 2D Coupe is the same fiberglass chassis as used in the proven Chaparral 2. The major road race in the United States, as well as those in Canada and Nassau. The changes to this chassis are subtle, being in the form of heavier suspension members to endure 24 and or 12 and 24 hour races. This body, of course, is all new, being designed to improve or to comply with the rules of prototype racing. It features improved aerodynamics, eliminating the need for front spoilers, so predominant on the two version. Doors that open in gull wing fa fashion and are and a large adjustable spoiler at the rear. This aids in keeping the rear the rear end down and thus improves traction under both braking and acceleration conditions. This spoiler does not in does not act as an air brake as on earlier cars. The chassis of this coupe, as previously mentioned, is made is constructed of fiberglass. The suspension mounts made of stainless steel are bonded to the fiberglass. Uh, unequal length A-arms and spring shock unit make up the suspension. Steering is the rack and pinion type and the brakes are heavy duty discs. Power is supplied by a rear mounted 327 cubic inch aluminum alloy block engine uh, enlarged to about 360 cubic inches, four dual throat carburetors and tune exhaust system at, along with other refine, yeah, refinements enable the engine to turn out 440 horsepower giving this 1,700 pound car a top speed of over 170 miles per hour using automatic transmission. Okay, Monogram brings you this automat uh, this automotive marvel in authentic detail and exact 124 scale, just as it first appeared at Daytona. Follow the assembly instructions carefully, apply cement neatly neatly and you will have a car which will be the envy of all your friends reprinted from the 1966 monogram chaparral coupe kit okay so i'm reading that uphill so if i'm a little bit stuttery try reading vertically <laughs> okay anyway so as we open up the instructions we see this amazing detail here this nice drawing up of course the body assembly and what's nice here is that they actually tell you that like the headlights are chrome um, where are we here window insert is clear and it says paint the shaded area semi-gloss black repeat for the other side um, and it tells you basically what's going on so your stoplights are chrome you paint in transparent red and all the rest so it's nice that they included that in oops and <laughs> now Let's take a look at the interior here. As you can see, this is very much like a slot car style. So this is a pan that hooks up and then your engine pipes, or your intake plate pops up through the bottom of this pan. The driver simply pops into the seat. The dashboard is simple. They give you the gauges on here, plus your steering wheel, your, your uh, shift lever pops into here. 
and then as you can see the floor pan is just a pan so this is if you are into slot car racing you could make up your own brass chassis in here and you know lower this down a bit put in your own um, slot car racing wheels and then in here you'd have your electric motor and somewhere up here you would have your pickups for your um, your guide keel and all that sort of thing for in the slots in the slot car track so you can see the nice wheels pop in this is very simplistic of course if you're just doing this as a snap together your first model it shouldn't take you too long to get it together and then we come to our back page here where we show the body dropping onto that interior pan dropping onto our chassis here and then this is all your decal placement for the car and it also gives you some nice side profiles and top and rear and here we have the body of the chaparral and like I said I did do a little bit of cleanup work on it I removed the seam lines from the outside as I recall there was quite a few high seam lines on this but again this kit is from 1966 so sometimes that happens all right we can see some great detail on the top the cut in of the gullwing doors for starters there is a little aerial or something on here um, a couple of bits and pieces. Of course, uh, we've got a reversed hood scoop here for ventilation. All right. Anyway, I'm going to turn this on its side now. Oops. Here we go. Let's just put it at a bit of an angle. So as you can see, there's a little hole here for that adjustable rear spoiler wing. It's a nice design here. It's got sort of a Coke bottle style. It was uh, starting to come up new in this era, the 60s, of course. There's your handle for your gull wing door. And a little side scoop right there. Very nice detail. You turn it to the back here and catch this right. You can see the grill as you can hear it. These little holes are for your tail lights, and then these would be exhaust ports right there, which uh, which are quite nice again. And then you turn this over to the front and see the nice grill in here. There's going to be clear lights going in there, as well as there's some little indentations. Very nicely done. Now just turning this over, here, if you can notice, there are a lot of these mold marks. Of course, these little bumps in here, half circles. I like to remove these with, of course, a number 16 hobby blade. There are these little uh, pins in there. That, of course, is for our interior to mount to. And then there's some more of these little mold marks in there. But again, for a one-piece body, this is a very nicely done kit. And it should be fairly simplistic to paint. Just, of course, sand it up, get rid of your seam lines, and then paint it with a nice white gloss paint. So next up, we're having a look at the underbody of this great car. And as you can see, it's just a one piece, but there is a lot of detail in this chassis pan. The little inverted crosses on here, or in, indented, I mean, <laughs> inverted. And then we have some reference to the, the scoops underneath the car for cooling brakes and whatnot, as well as the rear differential in here, with the two-speed two -speed differential. Very nicely done. The attempt at the uh, upper A arms or lower A arms on there. And then if we flip this thing over, you can see it's very uh, hollow in here. There are, of course, your mold marks going in. There's a button here which locks into the interior, as well as two more in there just to uh, hold it in place. You could also drill these out if you wanted to make this a screw bottom car. Although, I don't know, that's probably not necessary unless you're going to make a slot car somehow. But anyway, very crisp detail on this. And now let's actually take a look at that interior. And here's our final piece of this three-part model. Uh, well, there's more than three parts, but, you know, <laughs> three-part assembly. So here we have our interior. And as you can see, there is some nice detail. There's, of course, some more grills here these little holes go into the body underneath and then we have a couple of these little round circles these are not mold marks 
these are actually like little aluminum discs that would be used to cover things inside the car. It's got the nice front seat, very simplistic. The little hole in here for our driver, painted driver, to click in. And then there's a little hole in here for a gear stick lever. And there's the mounting to the bottom of the body. And if I just turn this over, again you can see this very simple. You can, oh, here you can read the date. There's a date stamp from the original mold. Copyright 1966, all rights reserved. But I mean, you can see all the little mold marks along here <laughs> and everywhere. But there's our tubes there to mount onto the frame, as well as this one. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna turn this over. I'm gonna bring back our, our three components. So, first off, we flip this over and we can align our holes together. Peg this into place. And there you got that. And then on the body, you can see that those holes are going to go onto those pegs in there. And then it's quite a nice tight fit along here. Sometimes that's a problem with model kits. In fact, it might be better to go like this. Okay, so we got that alignment. You can see that the top of that floor pan gives you a bit of the scoop inside there. And then of course, this will click in like that. And there you've got your chaparral all put together, more or less. I mean, there's gonna be more stuff. Of course, you need your wing in here and you need the insert for the engine and glass in the interior. There is a firewall as well. Uh, sorry, not a firewall, but a instrument panel. But, and our wheels and all the rest. But you can see that that's a pretty good fit for what you're getting with just a simple model kit. So again, kudos to Monogram for making such a nice fitting kit all the way back in 1966. So now let's take a look at some of our other components for this car. And here we have our components of our Chaparral. These are all the white pieces. Yes, these are all the white pieces, apart from the body, the chassis, and the interior. So you get two big fat plastic axles, which of course are big enough for um, metal slot car axles, about 1 16th, I think. And here's our uh, wheels with the wheel backs. These of course show the disc, or the drum brake, pardon me, going in the back here. Although, um, yeah, it's just a simple wheel backing. Here we have our dashboard, which I'll bring up into the camera here. I don't know how well you can see this because, of course, there's white plastic with bright lights. Let's just move that. <laughs> okay, you can kind of get a hint here. There's the gauges there, as well as a couple of the knobs and buttons, and our hole here for our chrome-plated steering wheel, which we'll see in a few minutes. And, of course, if you turn it over, there are some wool marks across the back, one under my thumb. But basically, that is your plain and simple dashboard. Finally, we have our rear spoiler. Now there's some nice detail here. It actually has the aluminum, sort of the riveted look on here. And then if you turn it upside down, there is, of course, the spot here for the mechanism. And of course, we've got our mold marks again, so you can clean those up with a number 16 hobby blade uh, and sandpaper, of course. There is a mark here from the parts tree that will have to be sort of filed into the shape of the rear wing but other than that it is pretty nice nice attempt for a Ravel monogram back in 66 and would have made a really good slot car could still do it as a slot car today with I guess Carrera parts okay now we get to my most favorite part of all this stuff and that is the chrome parts tree because, of course, it's nice and shiny. So here we have, this is all upside down, we'll turn it over in a minute. But here we have the intake manifold, and you can see the nice attention to detail, considering that this is just a flat plate that pops up through the body and locks in behind the rear window there. So let's turn this thing over now and see the rest of the components. And there you go. Now, as you can see, this is very nicely molded. We've got the wire wheel inserts very beautiful and then here these are our headlights the chrome backing pieces for the headlights 
We've got this nice three-spoke steering wheel sitting here, the rear tail lights, rear view mirror, and of course some other bits and pieces. <laughs> I do believe, oh, that's a gear shift lever, of course. So anyway, let's just take a look at the detail on the wires here. So we can zoom in, there you go, nice detail. Very good, you should be able to get a black wash in there, like of course Sid Dell Nuln Oil, and then wipe let paint it in and then wipe off the tops and it'll give you the nice chrome chrome spokes with the black backwash going into the bottoms. So now let's take a look at our windows. And here we have our window glass. This again is much like a Porsche 917 K with the glass with a single windshield wiper. But again this is of course before the 917k because that came out around 1970 so this is 66 so possibly porsche got used a bit of this idea in the uh, predecessor so here you got your rear window and these are the components for your headlights and of course your side windows here so let's just take a look at this up to the camera now you've got there's a bit of detail here um a couple little bits on the window. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Looking at it from my angle, not your angle. Okay, so there's like a little door here, um, which is cool. And two on each side. You got your windshield wiper right in the dead center. And then of course your window detail. Yeah, there's a little bit of a, like a railing with a bunch of little tiny nail heads in here. Or rivets. <laughs> they would be rivets. And of course more in here. They give you enough room on the sides to uh, be able to put it in the body without having to have the glue right on the windshield frame. So again, quite nice and nice glass. So next up we take a look at the tires. And these are really kind of cool. You get two sizes. These bigger ones for your rear tires and then more narrow ones for the front. They have, uh, of course, a nice tread pattern on them. Very much a wide grippy tire. Unfortunately, there is no manufacturer name on any of these tires, but that is provided in the decal sheet, which we'll see in a minute here. So there you've got your big ones as well as your narrow ones. So you can see quite a bit of difference in the height between the two. And of course, just the overall taller profile here. And again, they both carry the same type of tread pattern on them and are very nice. So these should be uh, some great little tires of course for your chaparral. Next up we're taking a look at the painted figure that's included in this kit. I'm just going to remove this little stick here. He wants to sit up. He's ready to race. <laughs> okay this actually is nicely painted but the only complaint I actually have about this figure, of course, is the fact that it was put together hastily in the factory. You can see that, you know, they made no attempt to clean up the seam lines along here. The figure, if you look, if you can see closely, his arms kind of look like they're glued on with a hot glue gun. Um, of course, you got the seam line going up, the helmet doesn't quite match along the top, and then comes down. Now it would have been better actually if they didn't bother pre-painting figures, but if they actually had just had the figure in components in there, because really it's not too hard to paint up a figure, but it just, you know, with the seam line running up here and, you know, just basically banged out of the factory as quickly as they could, it's not very appealing for the people that want to do the high detail. Although if you're just new to models and you got to snap together and you're going really quick, you know, dropping this guy in as is, it might be okay for you, but, you know, I'm a little more seasoned, so I'd rather have had it that I can build it myself. And the last piece we have in here is the decal sheet, or water slide transfer sheet. Now here, there's a lot of cool things going on. They have, of course, the number 65. There's three of them. And this is one that goes in the back on that grill on the rear pan. These uh, gold colored circles are actually like white walls that you put on the tires. And there is the Firestone nameplate for the tires. And then we have Cox on there. Now Cox 
they made a lot of radio controlled planes and of course guess what slot cars back in the 60s so of course that's a little hallmark decal to them and then we have shell oil these cross race flags i can't really see what this one is um and you also have decal gauges that you can slip on there instead of painting it on your dashboard so this one is copyright 2004 from Ravel Monogram. It's hard to know what the original decal sheet looks like when, of course, you don't have an original model sitting here. I could Google an image, I suppose, but I'll leave that up to you. So have you guys ever built this model kit before? What do you think of it? Do you like it? Did anybody build it as a slot car? Let me know down in the comments below. And that completes our look at the Jim Hall's Chaparral 2D Coupe. The Daytona 1966 winner with pre-painted driver figure from Monogram. All right, everybody, wasn't that a great couple of laps around the track as we pulled into the top racing position with this amazing 1966 Chaparral by Monogram. And isn't that painted figure really cool? Well, if you like these great videos and don't want to miss another part of the action, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. Let's get this thing up to the top pull position of 100 likes so that everybody that wants to race a Chaparral can and will with this amazing model kit. Let's make that happen, people. Of course we can. We are awesome. We are the model builders shaping the revolution of the world. All right, next week we will come back with another great car review that you won't want to miss. So until next time, happy racing.